Um, and Well, first of all, in in this comment was um, the person is broken and cannot be fixed. This is a sad and terrible reality for many, but fortunately not for most. You speak of the fear of death, but after a life well lived, a life well lived, there is little cause for fear. Okay, but then... To see this as some kind of horror is not to appreciate the gift we have been given in being alive. So right there, it's like, so if you don't fear death, then you're, I mean, to not fear death, you have to have a life well lived. But then say you're not appreciating life, okay, but what if it's not well lived? Then there is reason to fear it. And then there is um, reason to not appreciate the gift. As I mean, if you, if you took a creature and just exposed it or had a machine that constantly stimulated the central nervous system to tell the brain that the, the, the creature was constantly in pain all the time, and, and was not able to even have a sensation of something enjoyable. Um, and, even, and, and that's all that they've ever desired is to have that machine stop doing that, stop antagonizing the central nervous system and just pure pain, then yeah, that is a tragedy. So I find that contradictory, but that's okay. There's a lot of really cool things in there, but I'm trying to find this one. Ah. Reallocation, code for taking time and money from one person under threat of jail time and giving it to another. And I, I found that interesting because I can tell you from my personal experience that is not how it works that's not how it works um i had to take out a lawsuit for the particular condition that i have which is neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome um i didn't want to i had to the reason why is because i could not get any medical treatment at all even offering to pay everything out of pocket no insurance no questions asked just 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 throw it at me the full bill no doctor surgeon 
orthopedic specialist, you name it, would touch it. And the response was always, this is a work-related injury. In order for them to stop saying that and actually get treatment, I had to take the company to court and sue them over a lack of workers' comp. You know, workers' comp neglect. They settled out of court and I... I was released from the workers' comp, um, you know, designation, and I could finally get treatment. That settlement did not get me hordes and hordes of money. It was very, very little. It does not even begin to touch the amount of money I have had to spend on medical expenses for this condition. Nowhere fucking close. So no, it wasn't like, oh, I'm rolling. And no, certainly nobody went to jail. Nobody. And, and getting the labor department involved was really difficult too. It's not like you can just call up the police or call up the labor department and something happens they don't fear and and they, they don't they don't even the, the company that that i took to court they're not even bothered that i took him to court it's not even it's not like oh my god i can't believe he didn't know that's a common occurrence with that company there are people that still work for that company that have taken that company to court for workman's comp um denial for denying workers comp and they still work there after ta after suing them multiple times for multiple injuries that they've cured while employed so they don't even care because it's it's pocket change to them they really don't give a shit and no no one's gone to jail no one's gone to jail. I don't, I don't know where people get this information from. Now, here's, here's the kicker, okay? So as much as I say I like the idea of paying for social safety nets, because no, I realize they're not free. You pay for them with taxes. The problem is our government seems to have one thing that they're really, really good at, and that's mismanagement of social safety nets like foster care is in complete shambles our education system is kind of crap i mean it's i think we're doing better now than some of the other countries but uh, i don't know um it's it's pretty shit it's it's collapsed multiple times um the vfw i I don't know much about it, but I don't hear many good things unless you're a high-ranking officer. Um, it seems like the only social welfare program or social program that we have that the government seems to manage functionally well is the military. I mean... But 75%, if not more than that, of our taxes go to that social program alone. Everything else is just tiny. I looked at a chart not too long ago from 2019, and um, I, thought, I thought the amount, that how it was divvied amongst the different social um, safety or the social programs that we have was kind of fucked up. But I do realize that them putting that sort of money towards the military and managing it as well as they do is what makes us, the United States, a military powerhouse. But we're lacking everywhere else. 
So, fuck. I don't know. It's always this argument of, I don't want to have to pay for you, but it's like, well, if we have a job, then and anyone who's had a job has paid into the system. Like right now, getting on disability is ex extraordinarily hard. With the condition that I have, literally at times, my arm becomes entirely useless. It, it becomes dead weight because my brachial plexus, the main nerve and artery that go down my right arm, get completely crushed by various damaged muscles that are in my shoulder. Mostly it's mirrored. It's on my right, but mostly it has to do with the scaling muscles here in your neck. Uh, the upper trapezius muscles, and um, what is that other muscle fucking called? The muscle underneath your shoulder blade. Um, I can't think of what it's called right now. Um, scapula. Yeah. So the scapular, scapula, scapular muscle, muscle underneath your shoulder blade. Um, I also tore my infraspinatus and my supraspinatus and my rotator cuff. All of that has contributed to this. It's all healed up and now there's... I mean, potentially there's scar tissue everywhere, but it's putting, like, the muscles get really swollen up in here, and it just crushes the main nerve and artery that go down my arm, and so I get nerve pain just showering all over my shoulder, goes down my arm, it affects my elbow, so it's almost like I have tennis elbow, torn rotator cuff, and carpal tunnel syndrome all at the same time. When the artery gets crushed, um, I have no blood flow in my arm, and there's no pulse. Yeah, actually, like my hand will swell up, turn purple. I have no pulse in my arm, and um, I can't use it at that point. It's dead. That could cause a blood clot, which could give me an aneurysm, and I could die. Um, Long-term effects, if gone untreated, I could get permanent nerve damage, my arm could atrophy. Uh, the other thing is, is the nerve pain goes up the back of my neck and makes it so that the vertebrae in my neck, because, you know, the main nerve and artery stem from the vertebrae in your neck, and they go through the brachial plexus. Um, and so when that nerve gets crushed, it, it the muscles pull that, that nerve, and it causes my fingers to curl up. And I lose my dexterity and stuff. But the nerve pain shoots up the back of my neck, causing immense amounts of migraines and headaches. Goes into my ear canal, throws off my equilibrium, um, and causes the vertebrae in my neck to seize up sometimes. So it's quite painful. And there's a surgery, hopefully, to fix it. And I'm looking at doing that, which it's going to be expensive. So, yeah, the lawsuit money didn't really pay for shit. Um, not to mention th thousands and thousands of dollars of physical therapy and doctor's visits, MRIs. Um, okay, so I think I'm done on that story, but... It, it's always this argument of, like, I, I need, I probably should go on temporary disability, but right now, society has been leaning so far into right-leaning economic philosophies, and if you have that sort of philosophy, that's, that's fine, I'm, I'm not mad at you. I'm just saying that, on a personal level, as an individual, I run into problems, because it's hard to find an employer that goes, oh shit, your arm doesn't work, and if you use it in this particular way, it causes you 
mind-blowing pain that is literally debilitating you where you can't move your arm and sometimes you can't even move your neck or you can only stand up and or lay down instead of putting me somewhere where I'm not doing something to cause that they seem to just think pain meds are the answer which i can't get the pain meds because society is terrified of opiates and what i find absolutely phenomenal about that is that they prescribe other things for nerve pain like anticonvulsants and ssris ssnris where these drugs are addictive in a different like they're they're pretty fucking addictive actually you 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 will feel really fucking weird getting off of any either of those they have an enormous list of side effects way more side effects than opiates they're just as addictive as opiates So why is it prescribing things like gabapentin, neurotin, or um, SSRIs, SSNRIs? Why is that acceptable? And I've seen an SSRI that almost killed me. I mean, when I was younger, I used to take those. I don't take them anymore. But I was on one that actually made my blood pressure skyrocket to 180 over 90 something like that and when i got off of it i had the sensation like the muscles under my skin were just quivering and my nose would just bleed all the time it had it 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 made me very lucid like i could not really process the information to understand the world around me at all like it was like walking through a dream i felt like it was turning me into a sociopath i would laugh inappropriately at things that i should like nobody would laugh at like it's, it's not funny that's not not even a dark way it's just like what the fuck is wrong with me um So, I mean, that's just a taste of what SSRIs, SSNRIs can do. There's also the emotional dysphoria that comes along with those. So, I'm led to believe that I don't think society's problem with the opiate epidemic is as much to do with addiction because the other drugs are addictive. I don't think it's much to do with the side effects because the other drugs have even more side effects than opiates. What is it that makes opiates different than the anticonvulsants, SSRIs, and SSNRIs? Ah, opiates give you a sense of euphoria. Oh, and also I'd like to say that these anticonvulsant medications and SSRIs, SSNRIs, are not effective pain management treatments. They do not work. And they can actually make a person with neurogenic TOS, like I have, worse. Because they can make your blood thick. So if my hand, if if the main artery gets crushed, and I'm already at risk of having a blood clot, making my blood thicker is not helpful. Opiates are the most effective pain management medication known to man because they actually shut down or slow down the central nervous system. Now, if you want to create a medication that does that without the euphoria, I'm all for it. But right now, that doesn't exist. And I don't know why people have such a hard time with having a sense of euphoria, especially if somebody's in pain chronically. Um, You know, like, God forbid that they feel a sense of euphoria to make themselves feel better about the situation they're in for a short while. And the thing about opiates is they are fast-acting, 
instantaneous release. You don't need to build up a level in your system like you will with SSRIs, SSNRIs, and anticonvulsants. Uh, physical therapy is extremely expensive. Um, it takes a long time before you get a result, and the result can be undone in an instant. So opiates give you instantaneous relief. They're cheap. They're cheaper than SSRIs, SSNRIs, and anticonvulsants. But I, I think society's real problem with them is they cause a sense of euphoria. I don't. That that to me is the side effects of opiates are like constipation, upst upset stomach, and the addiction is is like okay, if you get off of it, you might feel like you have the flu. It's not going to kill you. The withdrawals won't kill you. I mean, if you're if you're on heroin, and let me let me say this too. Heroin is a different ball game than the pain meds they would prescribe you for pain. Different. Talking about codeine ver versus um, really, like, the, the, the only opiate stronger than heroin is morphine. And they're not going to give you morphine for that kind of condition, and if they do give you, like, little morphine pills, it's it's a very, 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 very small dose. So, then you have your opi opioids, you know, the man-maids, that are really strong, like fentanyl. They're not going to give you, they're not going to give, they give fentanyl to, like, fucking cancer patients, and same with morphine, so, no. They're not going to do that. It'd be something like Darvacet or Tramadol or oxycodone or um, hydrocodone, something like that. It's codeine. It's not that potent. It's just not that strong. And it's regulated so it's not going to be dirty. So I, I don't know what society's hang-up is with um, having a sense of euphoria to get relief from chronic pain. But I, it's just stupid. So back to the social programs, like the, the argument always falls on uh, if, if you have this, then you're just paying for somebody to do nothing. And, and sometimes, yeah, that's the case. But you do have people out there that are very, very limited in their capacity of what they can do. And I don't know what you're supposed to do with them. I don't, I, I don't know. Reagan thought that they could be just as employable as anyone else, and turns out they're not, and they just end up being homeless on the street. So I, I, don't, I don't know. We, I don't know what you do. You know, it, it's, it's fucked up when you see somebody say, I have adult ADHD, and they get on disability in five minutes, and then somebody who's blind with kidney failure and heart failure has to wait six to nine years to get it. And I and I looked into it like, you know, temporary disability. And they told me I have to be unemployed for an entire fucking year. I don't know how you make that work. Or either that, your doctor has to declare you disabled. So here I am trying to avoid disability. Because disability sucks. It would be a maximum, I believe, of $750 a month. And if you think that's easy to live off of, try it. Especially in, like, a bigger city. It's damn near impossible. It's the utter epitome of, potter, of poverty. So it's not an effective social safety program as it is. So I don't want to go on it. But I can't seem to find an employer that goes, oh, man, that really hurts you and it debilitates you. Maybe we should find something that you can do. And I go, oh, I can do that over there. No, 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 we're going to keep having you do things that you can't do. That makes no fucking sense. And it's become a repeated pattern. 
over and over and over again. So if you're for the right-leaning, like, Reaganomic shit, I'm not mad at you. I'm just saying it's creating problems for me on a personal level. And so is the communist capitalism that these corporations sort of operate under. It's, it's like, we're all a team and we all work towards the same, strive towards the same goal and pay and all that doesn't really seem to matter based on your abilities and what you do. Um, it just, the more and more I think about the company I work for, it's like, this sounds like communism. <laughs> but it, I, it, it's, it's presenting a real problem for me as an individual. So I personally don't have a problem paying into a, for a system that takes care of the people that live in this country. I don't think it should be abused, and I don't think somebody with adult ADD should get on disability faster than somebody who's blind with kidney failure and heart failure. That is ridiculous. I think that should be reversed, if anything. If anything, I don't think somebody with adult ADD should be on disability at all. I'm sorry. And I'm only talking about temporary until I get the surgery and can get back to work. So... That's it in a nutshell. Um, so are you still... Con I'm sure that's really confusing. Like, well, where do you stand politically? <laughs> um, I just try to make the best out of what I have. Now, if the United States turned into a totalitarian faction, I'd be looking for an exit because... That's unacceptable. I don't think it will, though. I really don't think it will. I think the people of the United States that live here do not want to live under totalitarianism. The majority don't. And that's the power in a democratic way, is that if you have enough voice of people that say no fuck that it sort of overrides that small whisper in the crowd that's like but totalitarians also everyone else is saying no that fuck that that's disgusting and it's much louder and it overpowers that small voice in the back of the room that thinks it's a good idea in that instance the majority would be correct I can't think of any examples of total why totalitarianism is good. And I think, I don't know, this, this country is founded on a principle of freedom and liberties. And um, I think that if you want to live under totalitarianism, there's other countries you can go to where you would live in that. Now, the right-leaning economics versus the left-leaning economics, controlled capitalism, or free market, totally free market capitalism, that's a completely different debate. And I'm not really sure what side on that I really preside on, other than I can tell you that trickle-down economics don't fucking work. I like free market capitalism to an extent. I like the idea of, hey, let's say I'm a painter and I have this painting and you want to buy it for $200 and I say, okay. Or I have this painting and I want to sell it for $500 and you agree that that's a reasonable price for that painting. I'm all for that kind of thing, like the sort of DIY uh, type thing. I'm all for it. Um... But, you know, like I said, I also like the idea of social safety nets. And actually, social safety nets, according to Antonio Gramsci, the godfather of communism, 
make it really, really, really hard to infiltrate and cause a revolution in a country that has them. Because it's really hard to make a system collapse when, if the economy does take a nosedive or tanks, the government's got a social safety net in place to cause people from falling into complete despair. That's from Antonio Gramsci himself. So those social safety nets actually protect us from crony capitalism. I'm not here to tell you which way to side on. I'm not. I'm not. I don't know what will work. I don't know. And I think more people should be comfortable in saying, I don't know. We think we know. We almost always think we know. But we don't. All right. So if you want to know more about my political leanings, um, just ask questions in the comments section and I'll tell you where I stand on that particular thing. All right. Sound good. Support the idea of choices, not one one's ability to impose one's will on others against their own will, and that includes corporations. They really seem they, they seem to be really good at doing that.